stick your hands up. Who's up today and seen all of the last season? Good. Then you're probably like me, that were left with your head, hands on your head, going, what the hell is going on? What's going on? Well, hopefully this man can talk us through how he felt. And if you'd like to ask questions, the microphones are there. But please, ladies and gentlemen, before I give me a massive round of applause, the brilliant Tom Myson! Say that. Hands, hands up again. Who saw the Brace yourself, Tom. <laughs> so, that was. Yeah, that's pretty much. I remember watching it and I got something apart from the both sat there. And wow, it was a head scratch. We couldn't figure out why they'd done it. How the heck did you. When did you find out that that was coming? And what was your reaction? When did I find out? Yeah. Um, maybe an episode or two before the finale. Wow. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. Um, I, d d I know that there were various uh, ideas like that floating around, but no, it was very last minute. Very last minute. I think Nicole found out uh, very late on as well. And how was that? <laughs> that look at the, ooh, so this, the front row are like... I'm so pleased I came. <laughs> I think you've got. I think the front row are pretty much your fan base uh, in terms of supporting your decision, but it's not good. Yeah. But how did you? Because I mean, that's a massive thing to drop on on a cast, unexpected like that. Three episodes from the end of the filming, mm -hmm. it must have changed the dynamic of you guys on set at that point. I mean, you must have been like, what? Yeah. I mean, we 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 kind of carried on as we as we normally would. We'd, we've got to finish the show and yeah. and be strong. Uh, it certainly has made me curious about the season four, which we've just been uh, renewed for a fourth season. Um, to find out, because that's quite that's quite a corner to to write yourself into. Yeah. Um, there are there are lots of avenues you can um, the writers can take us down for season four. Um, They've just probably got to pick the one that won't have them chased out of town with pitchforks <laughs> and flaming torches. They have to um, keep you. I'm sorry? They have to keep you. They have to keep me? Yes. <laughs> I'll let them know in case they can't have anything. Um, but you must have been kind of a bit of a few because there is a bit of towards the end there where they kind of, Nicole's story's just about to be wrapped up and they said to her, that literally, that she's not done, she might in that way, but they said, it's all about you. You must have read that and gone, okay, that's a bit more of a relief. Because <laughs> they kind of said it's Ichabod's journey, he's still going on, kind of thing. Oh, so, yes. So that must have been a bit of a relief at that point, because after the fact that they've got rid of, pretty much, they've got rid of it your son, be, your wife. Jenny, just be Jenny running around, fighting demons. I watch that. Yeah, <laughs> 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 What was the question? I'm sorry. It must be a relief that they've kind of sewn into the a plot. A relief that, that they haven't got rid of me. No, they've sewn into the plot that the chances of that happening are pretty remote now. Because it's just been, the last two seasons of Sleepy Hollow, it's been almost, they've reinvented the wheel again and again. And it must be kind of a bit nerve-wracking for you, in a sense, as an actor, because you don't know truly what's coming next. Oh, yes. It is nerve-wracking. And it's why you, you need to, it's always important group of writers who you have faith in uh, because yes the show has seemed to have reinvented itself with every season uh, I don't know why um, <laughs> some people did it some people not so much uh, and you know we're, we're now going into fourth season it's gonna have to be reinvented again and that poses so many opportunities it could be it could be a, a very exciting experience and trust me <laughs> it could. And it must be kind of a bit, as well for an actor, I suppose that's that's unique in a sense as well because you, there's not every day that you could be on set. Let's think, pick a show around and let's say, I don't know, Game of Thrones. You know, it's going to be one thing throughout its entire run. Lots of death. Lots of death. Lots of murder. Lots of whatever. But at least with Sleepy Hollow, you. Hodor, guys. <laughs> you know. Yes. That broke all of us. <laughs> They could break the internet, to be fair. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right, no, that's all right. But 
But it's always going to stay, you know that it's going to stay one genre, it's going to stay fantasy, it's going to stay that, but we're, uh, but we're, you're, we're getting, we're, you're, we're too high now. <laughs> I think even with, through the series, the, 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 the genre seems to have slightly changed. I always thought yeah. that the first season was, um, I always thought of it as more of a horror yeah. show. And then the second season became uh, more of a supernatural family drama. Mm -hmm. And then the third, uh, the third became very much a, a slightly more of a monster of the week type procedural. Um, and then who knows, the next, the next one could be, um, it could be in space. <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? It's bowling over no but ghosts yes, it's, it's, it's certainly unique to have a show that, that changes its tone so drastically through each season. And uh, it certainly stops it being boring. When you sign on for, uh, for you know, five, some six, seven years onto <laughs> a show, uh, there's always a part in, of, of your head saying, will I still be interested? after however many years. And this certainly fills it with surprises and, you know, keeps you, keeps you guessing what's coming next. And this... As an actor. Yeah. And I mean, it, the way it's heading, it could be police procedural, it could be anything now, couldn't it? And quite, it, quite. And did you not, when you first kind of got the role, did, is that where you expected it to go? I mean, did you expect Sleepy Hollow to be that <laughs> dynamic? The, the, the nice thing about when I first read it was that it, it was clearly a show that could go in a thousand directions. It could go anywhere. The, the, only, the only limits are the limits of the writer's imaginations. It can go anywhere. And that's certainly something that we've kept hold of. The next season, it could just be me in a car with a dog. <laughs> oh, some people like that. A, a border terrier, there you go, a dog. I'll get onto the showrunner immediately. You've been tweeting it for ages. My God. <laughs> That's okay. Well done. <laughs> After the end of the last season, you never know. The scare, but the one thing that has kind of stayed the same is Ichabod. Now, he has not changed that much at all. He's got more used to his lifestyle a little bit, but he's, he's always... changed his hair. And his hair. But he's kind of still said the same character to a degree. He starts to open up a bit more, but he's still kind of stayed in that same wheelhouse. Has it been kind of fun to explore a character that kind of ex stays the same in his core but expands every time a little bit more? It's, it's been fun to play a, a character who's uh, reluctant to change. Mm. Uh, and through Abby, his relationship with Abby, there are, there are things that he's forced to change. And through just being in the present day, there are things that are forced to change. But it's not really his... It wouldn't be the usual evolution of the character if he had stayed uh, alive in the 18th century. Yeah. Um, that's certainly been interesting, that's kept me on my toes. And find out which elements of the modern world and which elements of his relationship with Abby and Jenny and Joe, uh, he's, he's willing to go with them down certain routes. Like it took a long time for Abby to get him to emotionally open up and then he found the benefits of that. Uh, but then there are other things that he's more hesitant to. That's always fun, fi uh, trying to work out what he'd, what he'd um, go smoothly with and, and what, what grates him a bit more. And heck, he's even had his own emoji. I mean, come on, that did. How much more fun is that? emoji. Yeah. yeah. That must, that, that, when you see that in the script, that must have been like a what the heck, another what the heck, but a nice what the heck moment for you. I don't even know that it was in the script. I think it was a surprise on the day. I can't remember. Oh, no, 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 it was. It was. But it certainly wasn't Ichabod. I think he was riding an eagle, yeah. waving the stars and stripes. That was amazing. <laughs> that was pretty cool, though. I mean, and for that, I mean, Sleepy Hollow has done incredibly well in a sense. It's kept a sense of comedy as well throughout the entire oh, yeah. sort of last three or four years. I mean, what for you has been some of the funny moments that you've had and enjoyed on the set? Oh. But I, I was talking to someone earlier about how um, it seems as though every scene I do with Lindy, uh, it's the hardest scenes I ever do. Because all I want to do is make Lindy laugh. <laughs> and it's quite easy to make Lindy laugh. And it's quite easy for her to make me laugh, just shoot each other a look, and that's it. The scene's completely ruined. Uh, so it, it bodes well for next year when it's, it's largely me and Lindy. Uh, yeah, those are, I always like those things. She's very good at finding 
a lot of funny in what otherwise could be quite a harsh character. I think she's terrific at that. Um, the, the, the scene that you mentioned, the dentist scene, yeah. um, I was just sent the, uh, the, the blooper reel, the gag reel that will be on the, um, the, uh, the DVD extras for this last season because they send it to you and say, are you happy with looking like an utter idiot? <laughs> and I say, uh, yes, I am actually. Um, just like that. Uh, and and they, they, they should, they, they were, they, one of the bloopers was from that scene with the director just shout, a brilliant man called Guillermo Navarro, who uh, he did a brilliant um, Netflix, quite a few of them, a show called Narcos on Netflix. And he's largely a um, uh, director of photography, he was director of photography in Pan's Labyrinth and lots of other Guillermo del Toro films and Robert Rodriguez. He's brilliant. And he came and directed that episode. I was just shouting from way back, just going, Be funnier! Be funnier! <laughs> so that's a during takes. So that was real support from your director. <laughs> I didn't hear him laugh. <laughs> and I don't know where to go after funny. Um, but in terms of the scenes as well, the end of the season, there's a nice, a really emotional kind of motion filled scene when you're sat on the porch. How long did that take to film? I mean, was that one of the last scenes that you filmed together? or? Um, that was one of the last scenes. The, the, the last scene that Nicole and I shot together, oh, in fact, my last scene for the season, was the moment before that when we were in the archives and she grabs my hand and takes me off into straight into the, the porch. Yeah, they were, they were peculiar. It was peculiar to shoot, knowing that if we were to come back for another season, this dynamic, which has been so wonderful for the last three years, uh, would be no more. It was very strange. It was, um, it was a peculiar last day when we were in the archives doing that. Um, and of course, wondering where, where it would, would go. Hmm. Um, luckily, as I said, with, with Lindy, I think there's a very good relationship there. And I don't know which other characters are coming back or, or not. I know, oh, I know that Lance and Jessica will be coming back, I'm pretty sure. So there are lots of very good relationships, but, you know, Iqbal and Abby, that was one that really captured people's attention. Or oh, just get the mic around. Oh not? God! No, please don't. For the mother of God, it's the border terrier woman. <laughs> go on, go on. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Uh, Drunk. I'll ask a different question. It's to do with filming. Um, donuts, some pastries. How many did you actually consume in the end? <laughs> Is that what you said earlier? What? No, just do what you did today. Uh, what did I assume? Um, quite a lot. There were croissants as well. Very nice croissants. There's a very, very good bakery in Atlanta uh, called Little Tart Bake Shop. And we got some of their croissants, and I, I was glad, happy to eat those. Thank you very much for your question. <laughs> <laughs> She said, when she said I should have another question, she went, I've got another question. <laughs> it's the most scary thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Next season on CP Holiday, she would just turn up and knock on your door. She'd be like one of these people that comes to your door. She said, you begin to shut the door. I have another question. <laughs> Where are you going? Over here, there's another question. Oh, I enough. <laughs> Hi, I just wondered if he'll ever leave Sleep Hollow, maybe venture out in the world, go maybe New York, or maybe even to Disney World, and see what his reaction would be. <laughs> There's an idea, Disney World. God. I mean, he'd, 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 wow. There is another Yeah, there's America there. Maybe you'd just go and find there and just live in, <laughs> in Disney World, in the old America. Um, what was the first bit of the question? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, where to go? Well, it seems as though there will, because the, the, the organization that Washington set up that it was going to be a part of, did they mention that that was in DC? Did they say DC? Yes, he said there are people in Washington who want to speak to you. Yeah. So I imagine we'll be going there, which we did for the Bones crossover. Thank you. 
Just roll your eyes at me. She's not rolling her eyes, she's shaking her head like this, going, I'm shaking my eyes. It's my Adrian. <laughs> um, yes, we, so Ichabod went to um, DC for Bones and went to Scotland to see his family between the seasons. I, I imagine there'll be lots in DC for the next one. I'd like him to go to New York. Of course, we'd, all of it is physically shot in Atlanta. The Bones crossover was shot in Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, maybe we should we should go to New York. I like New York. Maybe we should shoot there. I, th I think you should write to the showrunners and say, get Tom to New York. Maybe you could shoot in, in a nice restaurant in Manhattan somewhere. <laughs> well, we know you're like, it'd be Broadway then, and they did say they were going to make you do singing or something, but oh, God, no. Singing? God. That'll be, that'll be the... It's not going to watch Hamilton. That'll be good. <laughs> I just picture it in the weather Disney con, I just picture him going on It's a Small World and I'd love to see what he made of it. I'd like to see him stuck in It's a Small World. <laughs> I was reading about that, someone was stuck, it broke down and they were stuck in there for an hour and a half. Oh no. And oh. Uh, it was only after 55 minutes they turned the music off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine Ichabod coming out just going, It's a Small <laughs> So if you'd like to ask questions, please feel free to put your hand up and I will come around to you. So we're going to kick off with this lady here in white. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.